Okay, everyone, we'll go ahead and get started. This is the regular meeting for Woodman Hills Metropolitan District, Thursday, July 27th. I have 5.30 p.m. First item is call to order. Sherry Ringen present. John Mark present. Chelsea Eyes present. Troy Stanton present by phone. And we will, um, I'll make a motion to excuse Stacey Popovich. She is actually deployed to a wildfire. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, item number three, director's disclosures, money disclosures. Uh, no comments. Okay, item number four, approval, disapproval of agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. <laughs> On a motion by John and a second by Kelsey. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item number. Aye. We thought you fell asleep on us, sorry. Yeah. Uh, item number five, President's welcome and remarks and rules, rules of conduct. I'd like to welcome all of you. We have more people here than we've seen in quite a while. We appreciate you all coming. And would anyone like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Okay, number six is public comment regarding current board business not on the agenda. We have some faces that are new. If you'd like to introduce yourself, if you have anything to say. Uh, Kevin Haas, Department of Islands. Just here to observe and listen. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Christina. Christina Welch. I live in Falcon Highlands, and uh, we'd like to talk about some of the issues that are going on over there today. So is everybody here from Falcon Highlands? Anybody not here from Falcon Highlands? Oh, well, it looks like all Falcon Highlands. Christina, you want to start us off? Oh, we go now? Okay. <laughs> um, am I supposed to stand up for this? I don't usually go to board meetings. So. Completely up to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to stay down because I got a headache today. Um, <laughs> so we're here to discuss some of the, the water issues we're having in the neighborhood primarily and how it's affecting our roadways, I suppose. But um, I have seven questions for you. They're pretty basic. I think we can get through them really quickly. Um, starting off, uh, according to Woodman Hill, uh, intergovernmental agreement, the IDA with Falcon Highlands from 2003. Um, Woodman Hills will assist in the delivery and the delivery of wastewater services to the Falcon Highlands development. Is that still accurate? Yes. Yes. Pretty basic, right? Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't find the updated version of the agreement, <clears throat> so gotta clarify. Um, additionally, it states that the Falcon Highlands Metro District shall be responsible for the design construction, installation, maintenance, and financing of a complete municipal wastewater collection system within their boundaries. Is this still correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, considering this and any amendments made to the IDA after 2003, who owns the wastewater system in the Falcon Highlands development? Falcon Highlands Metropolitan District. Okay, thank you. Yay. <laughs> and then, who is responsible for the maintenance of said system? Falcon Highlands. Who's responsible for maintenance? Well, on the wastewater like system? Pay, in terms of paying for it, they pay. And any maintenance needs to be done that is. Woodman Hills does the maintenance, maintenance on the system, system right. but the financing comes from Falcon Highlands. Correct. Okay. Um, let me just get down here. <clears throat> Could I, you asked who has the responsibility, right? Uh, yeah, for the maintenance. So is it correct if 
Falcon Highlands is financing it, even if you're performing it. Right. It's Falcon Highlands responsible. responsibility. Right. Correct. They've hired you. Correct. Like Correct. Okay. Um, so if they're hiring you, then does Woodman Hills keep records of the maintenance performed on that system? Yes, we do. Okay. How far back do those records go? I know for sure at least three years since I've been doing it, but okay. beyond least. that, we have to look. Yeah, we have to look through our records to see what we have. <laughs> the list station, we have a lot of records on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then does Whitman Hills utilize a camera system for any of their system inspections? Yes. Okay. Have you ever used that camera to inspect the sanitary underdrain system in the Falcon Highlands development? Nope, we don't do anything with underdrains in Falcon Highlands. Okay. And why is that? They're a headache we don't want. It's not ours. So under drains have never been a responsibility of Woodman Hills, whether it is on the maintenance side um, or design, anything like that. We have nothing to do with under drains. So any under drains that are in the Falcon Highlands Metropolitan District's boundary is solely the Metro District's responsibility. We do not touch them. We do not do maintenance on them, nothing. Does that include the sanitary under drain? What's the I, I'm I'm director of finance, so I'm looking at Walt. Uh, He's the director. Water water are or simply for removing wastewater or water from around the house, so it doesn't flood. No, under drains are for moving water away from foundations and structures. Yeah, there's no such thing as sanitary under drain. Uh, I'm going to show you this map that everybody has signed off on at this point, and the development so constructed. Just a quick direction to the board. Um, for these really tiny, discussions, but members right, of the board are free to ask questions. There's no obligation to provide an answer. Um, you can you know, provide answers if you wish. Right you can compile the questions and publish something later. That's what um, we or were. simply be signed. It's very important. It's a board member. It says this is the utility layout sheet. Real This is a map showing the water and sanitary lines. We don't have any. Oh. Any of, do, do we want to talk about why that's considered a sanitary underground? Because I'm prepared. <laughs> I mean, this thing is first we've been approached about this. Okay. So I think it may be best, and I'll let the board answer um, mm -hmm. on this, but if we can get gather all the questions that you guys have, and then we can have some time to put a thoughtful response together versus just coming off the cuff, I think that okay. would be more appropriate in getting you guys right. some, some more answers. I'd like to speak to that if I may. <clears throat> Christina, it is right. You came into the Falcon Highlands board um, two hours into the board meeting. I did not know what but, was going But you there. hit all the uh, same questions with us. No, I asked you specifically some different questions. Well, the questions that were asked to us I'm a board member of Falcon Highlands, and so I'm trying to help understand all this. But the questions that were posed to Falcon Highlands, we took down, we recorded, and we passed on to our engineer, our legal counsel, and our district management people. And they told you that we would answer those questions and get back to you. They did the not say they did. They did not respond with anything. We, we, asked them. we told you we would get back to you. With, with the and we asked that you respond. We gave you a week to come up with a response, to which we received no response. Mm -hmm. Nobody responds to so this. Like this, 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 this is not about the Highlands meeting, so this should not be discussed. I understand. So the, the, I'm just clarifying. The, the, yeah, it's, uh, this, this is with the Hills Metropolitan District. Yeah, so that's yeah. getting off. Under Green, so I think that sure. right. after discussion no. with, so it's, you know, no, has Carter, nothing to do with us. No. With Carter and with the attorney, if you would please present us with the list of questions you would like answered so that Carter and our team can well, research. Well, that was, I don't have other questions for you at this point. Yeah, I just want to ask those basic questions. And beyond that, I mean, I have a clear understanding of what this system is doing in our development. And so I don't have questions, but if you guys want to have a meeting, because we do believe that it's part of the sanitary system, and there are several reasons to support that, and the fact that everybody else just says that it isn't, isn't like that's not quite accurate and regarding the questions that were asked and why we have to come to you at this point about this is because we specifically asked 
top and high list to provide documentation showing that the ownership for the systems, the underground systems, like they said, had been transferred to El Paso County because that's what they keep telling us. But they have not provided any documentation and El Paso County says they do not accept responsibility for those types of systems. So at this point, it's not believed that that ownership was transferred. El Paso County has no record yeah. that they accept and it responsibility. Is, you know, if they, Falcon Highlands put it in the ground, they owned it originally, it's their responsibility to produce the, the paperwork. I'm sorry, I cut you off, Troy, did you want to say something? All we have is a maintenance and operation agreement. We, are, we don't handle under drains. If, if, if it doesn't go into you, the sewer line, we don't control it. If, if Falcon Highlands asked you to check it, would you check it? We cannot, we don't have the equipment to do under drains. It, um, so you guys know, and we can confirm this with engineers, but it is necessary infrastructure for maintaining your sewer lines in this high groundwater environment. Well, yeah, they're saying they don't own it, though. so it's Falcon okay. Highlands that owns it. So uh, should maintain but Falcon Highlands. Falcon Highlands. So I'm guessing because they incorporated twenty-five thousand dollars this year, which they've never had in the past, and I've been there for over thirteen years for stormwater and wastewater or stormwater yeah, drainage. drainage. So I'm not sure why all of a sudden they included twenty-five thousand dollars, and at the same time saying there's no problem, that we've never paid, that I've been there for 25, for 13 years. So I'm guessing you're gonna get some money to do some inspections from Falcon Highlands, is my guess, because well, that's money. Well, I'll just explain, we don't have the equipment to do those. No, 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 no. I, don't know, I don't know what kind of inspection so It's just, it's just. And it's, that's not part of the maintenance agreement, so mm -hmm. we would we wouldn't handle any type of inspection okay. like that. That, that. This is all great information for yeah, us, I mean, it I'd really like is. I'd see the details of that maintenance well, so Can anybody provide, provide the maintenance detail that is included? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we, you know, That's a good question. The same thing as Christina, I have made phone calls to Woodman Hills, to Falcon Island, to El Paso County, to, and we have bigger problems than what she's explaining uh, at my personal home, and nobody will give you an answer. It's literally this the entire time, and Woodman Hills says that's not their responsibility. Falcon Highlands says that it's been contracted to Woodman Hills. And El Paso County says, we don't know what the hell you're talking about. And so if we could get some kind of maintenance agreement to where, we, I mean, I think that's our right as homeowners to know who is maintaining what, why, and where. And if you guys um, have an agreement, agreement that says it's not you, then it's not you. Yeah, if anybody wants what? to produce that type of agreement, we can certainly go look and talk to the next person in line. But it's I mean, we're to the point to where I've pumped five million gallons of water out of my basement. That's where we're at. I haven't counted, but it's been going on stop for three months. Mine's like, been going on since the road work in El Paso County did. Mine's been going on for the. And if you study our drainage maps, there's certain areas throughout the development that are being like severely impacted. Those are primarily on the lower, like southern side of the drainage. Everything flows to the southern side. We've got two different systems, and the homes that are on those bottom areas are being like destroyed. So you have, uh, I need mean, to speak for just a moment. Uh, so this has been a common problem since 2013. No, 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 now, every time that we've presented, or my, me individually, I can't speak for Woodman Hills on this, I'm speaking as an individual homeowner uh, within Woodman Hills, and that is, is that my basement flooded, and there is, we tried every avenue, uh, and, other than, and you can't even get flood insurance to cover that. Uh, it's a matter of personal protection. I paid to replace all of my window well. Uh, it's a construction issue. It's not an under drain issue. It it's is. how they construct these houses um, and how they don't uh, properly affix window wells to the house. My sump pump has been running for almost two months straight now uh, because of how much water we've gotten. It's a common problem out in El Paso County and the unincorporated area. Unfortunately, we as a board here with Woodman Hills, our maintenance and operating agreement with Falcon Highlands 
is only to operate the sewer system. It has nothing to do with under drains, French drains, sump pumps, anything in your home or around your home. Uh, our maintenance agreement is strictly to operate and maintain uh, the sewer. And that maintenance agreement state your Falcon Highlands should have a copy of. And let, let me ask you one uh, on that, Troy. Would that include the sanitary underdrain system that's part of the sewer system to protect it? So other than the sewer lines, I have no idea what you're talking about when you're talking about a, a sanitary underdrain. We deal in sewer lines, but we don't deal in underdrains. We never have. Does which which has always been a problem in the county. Does anybody want an drains. explanation of why it's part of the sanitary well, system? It, and, and that's that's understandable because a lot of people don't realize it till we discovered it through all the filings. So it is technically part of the sanitary system. It's designed as an underdrain for the sanitary specifically. Uh, so now, and I and I know if you guys aren't aware of it, like everybody else has been, that's totally understandable. I mean, it's like we're not here to come up, we're just here to try to come up with a resolve to the issue that we're going on. And like I said, I've been there in that place, well, maybe 15 years now. I never had a single water issue at my location until they performed road work in 2020. My sump pump began pumping May of 2021. Up until then, it was completely dry. So the road work performed did something to the system that takes excess water, whether it's underneath the sanitary system, part of that, if it ties into that, we don't know. However, <clears throat> it hasn't stopped pumping since then. So something has gotten damaged from the road work that was performed uh, to affect us and affect our neighbors, and recently, more recently, more neighbors because I think it's a compounding issue of sediment and improper maintenance of any of those systems that help move water away. I have my original geotechnical uh, drawing. I don't have groundwater. My groundwater, when my house was built, was 19 feet down. My, the, the uh, brain fart, uh, bedrock, is at 13 feet. So something is going on between the 13 feet of my basement to the basement that is not technically underground water. It has occurred since 2020. That's when the first problem, I think that's what exacerbated the problem. I have a, I had a monitoring well drill at my house to monitor groundwater for the underground system. And my groundwater has been between four and seven feet from the top grade of my driveway since uh, June of this year. And I understand there's a lot of rain, but if you go to where the underground system daylights, there's not a single drop of water coming out of it at all. I have pictures in the video of that if anybody wants to see it. Where is this? And you mentioned 2013. You mentioned 2000. Drainage behind Walmart and the Again, Woodman Hills only okay. is taking Wood care of what goes through your sink drain, what goes through your shower drain, what goes down your toilet. Just, I just want to make that's what we take care of. Right. Quick record before Troy. So uh, we've been there since at least 2008. 2013, our sump pump never went on. So all the rain you guys have talked about, it never affected us. It hasn't affected us up until 2021. So. Uh, can I just show you this other construction drawing for development so that you understand why we're saying this may have something to do with the sanitary system? This is the um, this is actually the underdrain layout. So the map I showed you previously. This shows your sewer and water line. Yeah, it's teeny tiny. Mean your water line. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> these water lines. So the original um, can you read that? It says sanitary underdrain so, layout. That's okay. where it lets out. Just kind of a, a quick note for those. Wooden Hills has a website. Sorry, but it doesn't parallel. 
you can go on the tabs. There's a section for intergovernmental agreements. You can find a copy of the 2003 intergovernmental agreement between Whitman Hills and Portland. That's still, that's specific. Yes, so it's available publicly for everyone to review. The newest IGA you would find it was just for us to provide. As you can see here, uh, to help. we are not work doing your water treatment. And the difference between yeah. this so that's all that that is is just for us to run your water treatment. Like yeah, there, there was a newer idea from earlier, so it's strictly water treatment. In this system, sewer. they use a the perforated pipe. The sewer and so our, our, our district is, is our district, Falcon Island, is trying to work through it. We've been in touch with the engineers. Okay. We've got the lawyer we will, involved to again, determine whether the they're going to collect all the information. So, 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 we, so I, again, guys, I, just, I think we're getting a little distracted. We um, are, yeah. It please just, just submit everything that you have to Carter. Carter will do the research that we can give you guys. Our IGAs are all on our website. Um, and that will tell you exactly what we have. No, no, she said that. Is that the three years? But on the door, is the door or Dola or something? I don't know. There's too many sites. It says that there's an amendment for 2012. So water operations. So that's for water operations. That's for us to operate your water treatment facility. And then we get, that wasn't from 23? We did update it at that point. So there's two more updates? There's a, Just for water operations, it's nothing okay. to do with the sewer. Okay. There's an addendum to the original sewer contract that that was done in 2001. Is that on the website also? I'd have to double check, but what I'll do is I'll take down uh, you guys, give me whatever email address you want, and then whatever questions you have, there's certain documents you need. I'm your dad. I would yeah. ask that you really appreciate the ears. Yes, yeah. thank you. Got it. Because we're, it's again, just, it's a fact finding thing for us to see who's really responsible. So I, you guys really have shown us who's responsible. So it gives it, it helps us tremendously. So does anybody else here have any questions other than under drain issues? Okay. Okay. Thank no, no other, no other comments from the community. Just so Do you have anything else exciting you to talk about? <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you never know. I have to stick around and find out. The mystery. Well, you're more than right. welcome to stay. Next. Okay, so next, approval or disapproval of financials. Um. Okay. If you guys want to, if you just pass that along. You know, anybody that. Has questions that uh, you want documents emailed to you, please put your name, your email address, and what documents you're looking for, and I will do my best to get that to you in the time we Okay, uh, financial review for our month end of June of 2023. So, starting with Parks and Rec, it's on your legal side sheet. So, um, I think let's do this. Total revenue for the month of June is, where did it go? I think we lost a page. It looks I like think so it. too. All right. Can we go off before Parks and Rec? Yeah. For some reason, when I printed it, printed it off. Is there, are you looking at year to date? No. June? Because right. you, it's, Oh yeah, this is page two of two. So page one is on the back. See, you can't get in totally trained. Oh, you've got it backwards. The way I there we go. It. Look All at right. the first one. Total income, uh, actual income for the month of June was 257053 uh, Total expenses for the month of June came in at 179479 on a budget of $242,024. 20, 
Uh, so net ordinary income came in at 77,574 on a budget of 12,973. So continuing the trend that we've seen your or month over month where you know we've been either exceeding or coming very close to our budget expectations, but also keeping our expenses much lower than what um, we have seen in the past. So just again, a lot of great things coming from Marcus and his team really looking to streamline processes and practices that are helping to, to uh, reduce costs. I mean, obviously there's always gonna be expenses, right? Um, things break, you gotta fix it, but we are seeing much better performance. Is there, Guys, would you mind like, um, yeah. taking your conversations out of the hall, please? Does anybody else have questions that they want me to email them? No? Okay. Moving on. Or Good job, Marcus. questions. Parson Rack, questions. No? Good. Marcus, do you have anything you want to say about? No, it'd be just an example of some of the streamlines that we've done. We were looking at anything top to bottom on what we can do, so one of the things we've done is we looked at how much we are paying for part-time staff to be gym attendants at RCE and here with a bulk of that going to room rentals really being here to unlock doors and things like that. So we kind of reevaluated we were doing that. We've actually hired on a full-time custodial that works those same hours, but we're spending money by having the one person versus um, the part-time staff kind of all over the place. So that's just one example of some of the stuff we're doing. But that number, if you look at that salary line, of course that looks like we're not, like we're way below, but we'll start catching up because we have had some other staff um, that have taken other jobs and we're out, you know, the hiring process, the normal head and flow, which I anticipate every year we're gonna see some of that. But um, we will start gaining on that number, even though a bulk of it will come to an end this week because our four part-time maintenance guys, parks maintenance, all go back to school. The school starts August 2nd, I believe, for district. Wow. We're already at school time. They yeah. are already at school time. So that's, that's just an example of some of that budget. Thanks, Marcus. Yep. Uh, moving on to water, so the month end of June, total income came in $745,966 on a budget of $527,524. Um, water tap fees, obviously you can see that line, came in at $180,500 on a budget of $66,000. So just continue the same trend that we've talked about where I fully expected the back half of the year. So Q end of Q3, Q4, I really expect to see the slowdown in building, um, especially with what you know the Fed just did yesterday. You're seeing interest rates continue to go up. Inflation, yes, is coming down somewhat, but um, people are just not buying as many new homes, uh, but there was already plans to build homes throughout this year, but I really think they're front loaded. Uh, so I don't expect to see this continuing. Um, so we're, we're just getting our, our money kind of ahead of time versus kind of spread out throughout the year. On the expenses side for water, uh, actual came in at $229,427 on a budget of $281,540. Net income for the month actual is $516,538 on a budget of $245,983. Uh, so it was able to keep expenses under budget while exceeding revenue expectations. You'll notice that the district residential water use was much lower than the expectation, but that, as you all know, we've been getting a lot of rain, mm -hmm. right? And this was the month of June, financials. If we are not, you know, if we have a lot of rain, then obviously we're not pumping a lot out of our wells, people aren't irrigating as much. That's why you're seeing a decrease in the revenues. Um, it's nothing to be worried about. It, it's just common uh, based off of the weather. Any questions, revenue, or expenses for water? Okay. 
Moving on. Wastewater, uh, month of June. Total income came in at $507,035 on a budget of $425,051. Again, same thing, tap fees, right? Is that in line with uh, what we saw on the water side? Um, but the residential sewer use was much closer at 99.17% in water. Expenses. Uh, actual came in at $203,115 on a budget of $216,825. Net ordinary income was $303,919 on a budget of $208,225. No issues, <clears throat> either revenue or expenses. You know, we've been talking about some of those expense lines that we know. Um, have been trending up with, with a full expectation that potentially sometime in Q4 we may see a budget amendment. It would not increase costs. It just would lower our net income values and uh, you know, just puts a kind of a, a damper on the ability for CapEx money for the following year, but it wouldn't result in any kind of increase in rates. I'm glad to see that the last three pages is in the correct order. You know, I try. <laughs> this packet was only 157 pages long, so just saying. All right, total district. Um, total district revenue for the month of June was $1,516,229 uh, on a budget of $1,207,573. Total expenses came in at $615,747 on a budget of $740,391. Net ordinary income came in at $900,482 on a budget of $467,181. Um, again, we exceeded expectations on TAP fees. We cut expenses where we can, leading to a, a better net ordinary income position. So continuing the same trend we've been on every month so far this year, I expect it to continue to be strong for at least the next two months. Um, but I, again, I think Q4, we're gonna start to see that revenue line um, come in more into expectation, at least from a monthly perspective with the loss of tap fees for the last part of the year. Any questions? No, I think Troy and I say it all the time. We appreciate our team keeping expenses in line and saving money where you can. It's very much appreciated. And with that, I'll make uh, I'll make a motion to approve the financials for the month of June. Second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next item on the agenda is to ratify the application requesting an extension for the filing of the 2022 audit. So I'll give some background on this one. <clears throat> so as the board is aware, we changed audit firms this year um, from SKR to Big Coford. With the change, uh, Big Coford was just a little concerned that with their workload, and being a new client of theirs, that they may not be able to get everything done by the July 31st deadline. So they asked if we would be okay with filing an extension. And so uh, I got that in front of Troy, the president of the board, as well as Stacy Popovich, the treasurer of the board, and they approved that um, extension. It's nothing on our end, so there are no outstanding items that the district is responsible for giving to the auditor. It is simply in the auditor's hands. Um, they unfortunately had a uh, their main auditor that was on our account leave the organization suddenly. So uh, they're kind of scrambling to get back on track. So it's actually kind of a good thing that we had this extension in place. Otherwise, we'd be doing it anyways. Um, but I do fully expect that we should have these audit result, results actually before the August board meeting. Um, not that we're going to hold a special meeting for that, but the results will be in probably within the next two, two, two and a half weeks. So do we need to make a motion to ratify? To ratify the extension. 
I make a motion we ratify the extension. Second. Any discussion? Okay, motion by John, second by Kelsey. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number nine, discuss and consider for approval the golf course water agreement. It's in your packet. It's in the packet. John's got a, a hard copy. So the other, everyone else already signed it. Yeah. Basically it's an update from the 2003 agreement we had. There are some big legal issues associated with it as well as the cost of delivery was substantially lower than what it is now. We fixed that. Um, one of the other things we were able to change out of there was one of the options they had was to take water off the Guthrie wells for water in the golf course. This agreement takes that away. It's an option, but we don't have to acknowledge it. So this agreement means the golf course can only use the water coming off the wastewater plant and the native flow off the creek. And there's cap limits on it. They're guaranteed guaranteed 450,000 gallons. They can go up to 650, I believe. Uh, once you go to 450, the pay structure changes a little bit, a little bit more in our favor. Puts them more on point for what they should be paying. Because we mentioned before, uh, ever since that 2003 agreement, they've really over allocated their water update out of that stream. Well, I know you guys have put a lot of hard work into this. So I know it's been back and forth, back and forth several times. And definitely appreciate all the hard work and coming to a final agreement with them that everybody's happy with. Um, is this the copy that needs to be signed? Yes, sir. Well, they, uh, that should go to you. I don't know if you printed one for Okay, can I get a motion to approve the restated water service agreement for uh, the Gulf Course water? I'll make a motion we approve it. Second. Motion by John, second by Kelsey. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> you're, you're happy that's done. Yes. <laughs> One down. One down. I know what a headache it's been. Uh, item number nine, discuss or number ten is the attorney's report. Yeah, not a lot of surprises on here. All these are carryovers from last month. Uh, the one thing I'll point out is the very first item, uh, memo regarding uh, disclosure requirements under the line of credit issuance that we that was previously approved this year. Um, that will be sent to you here in the next couple of days. So I just wanted to point out that that wasn't currently in your inbox. Um, unless there are specific questions on anything else in here. Um, and some are coming up in a little bit. I can answer questions or allow the meeting to continue. I have no questions. I know what's coming up. Okay. Okay. Item 11, review and discuss draft amended and restated rules and regulations. So, the rules and regulations, um, this is just another draft review, right? So the board was provided the updated copy at the last meeting. We are still working through a final draft that we expect to have in front of the board for review and adoption at the next meeting. Uh, but this is an opportunity for the board to let us know if there's anything that you guys saw in your first pass that you want us to address um, if not, we will continue with the draft that we're working on now. We'll provide the board an update in the August meeting. I will say the, the attorney that went through this line by line and highlighted and asked questions about everything, I was very impressed with how thorough she was with going through that. Um, and a lot of things that I read in there was like, yeah, that really doesn't make sense. So. Hopefully when we get done working through all this, we'll have a much better product than what we had before. I'll pass it on to Heather. 
Need more discussion on that? Does anybody have anything they wanted to add? Troy? No, I'm good. The directors are still doing some edits with John and Heather, so there will be a final draft um, that will have some slight changes going into the August meeting, so just be aware of that. But as of right now, it's nothing, I don't think it's material changes, right, John? Most of them are probably immaterial changes. Uh, truthfully, I haven't looked at okay. the latest draft in the last couple of weeks. That's so fine. Heather was on top of that. <clears throat> Okay, item 12, consider for approval the resolution adopting amended and restated bylaws. Yeah, so kind of in a similar vein as the rules and regulations, um, we have compiled, kind of separated the bylaws from the prior rules, because generally speaking, rules are what you think they are. Bylaws are more kind of how an organization functions. So we've pulled that from the rules and created it as a separate document. Um, and what you see before you is kind of the final iteration of this. So the final bylaws are attached as Exhibit A. I've read through them all. I didn't have any questions. So I will make a motion to approve the resolution adopting the amended and restated bylaws. Second. Any discussion? On a motion by Sherry and a second by John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Item 13, discuss policy regarding production of water and wastewater reports. So just uh, some background on that. Uh, kind of learned a little bit this morning from Colleen. We're going to have another meeting coming up in two weeks. But starting around late last year, beginning of this year, we used to give all commitment letters for, you know, whether it's you know, one business, a group of homes. The county will no longer accept a, a commitment letter. They need a full, so for the water side, need a water resources report. And for the wastewater side, need a wastewater disposal report. Either can be anywhere from 14 to 25 page documents. They're custom to each development. And being new to us, it's expensive. Um, we just had to do one for paintbrush for a church up there. The 2SFE church is probably going to cost us $4,800. We need a $5,300 off the tap. It's, and rocking the, the county, they agreed that these costs should be passed on to the developer that's not a cost we should have even though it's a new regulation they're requiring so this is going to a method to put in place it's going to be similar to an escrow account where the developer wants these reports before they can get the commitment letter that has to go with it they're going to put money into an account so uh, respect will draw the funds off of that for the report and if there's anything remaining it'll go back to the developer and if it's a large development that goes over the ten thousand at eighty percent They'll kick in that's another five to cover those costs. So we're still involved in the process, but financially it covers us. I, I was very surprised when I read about this and I talked to Carter about it that this isn't something we we haven't always done. No. Why why would we pay for all these reports for somebody else? Exactly. It should have never been our responsibility. No, and we never got notices that this was going to change. It just as developers, we started getting commitment letters. The county started kicking them back to us and requiring this report. That these reports take four to six weeks to put together. I don't expect our engineers to jump through hoops to get these done. They're bigger fish to fry, but this way we still get them done and cover our costs. Perfect. Just a clarification point. Um, the money will be deposited with the district so it will come to my office we will hold the funds and then we will be the administrator um, of those funds both to respect from the engineering and any additional payments that may be due from that developer or reimbursement any more 
discussion on that? Be good. I just felt like you used more to do the wallet, that's all. <laughs> no, I don't want to push it. <laughs> I can spend money quite easily. I don't <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> that is true. As you'll find out later. Uh-oh. <laughs> Troy, I'm feeling sick. I think we need to cancel the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are doing great. Doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, uh, item 14, park and rec report. Uh, before you do that, you guys yeah. have to vote on that policy. We tried to skim past it. It just said discuss. It didn't say nothing about voting. You know you have to give me very clear directions, Carter. I just did. <laughs> I thought so. That was for the bylaws. I'll make a motion we approve. I need more discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, now you can move on. Thank you, boss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Parks and Recreation. We're cranking in summer. Uh, we got another concert coming up on Saturday. Um, it's Playing With Smoke will be the band. Um, filing 11, um, HOA will be out there again this month. So if you're in Filing 11, they give you a $5 coupon that you can use at the food trucks or the beer garden. So. They better not raise my HOA piece. That's not me. That's, that's a whole other board meeting. Are you in the room? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I'm so sorry. come over. <laughs> me too. So come over and get a beer. It'll be, the weather's nice. Okay. Last month it was really nice. We had a pretty consistent crowd of 150 to 170, and they were there to the very end. So last month was really nice. I, looking ahead, I don't think this month is going to be. The weather's going to cooperate as much. But we at least got one so far that was really nice. Um, we are talked about turnover a little bit. Um, Allison, our fitness supervisor, gave her um, resignation. She's going to be moving. She's from Texas originally, and moving back to Texas. So in the process of recruiting um, fitness on that, and Stephanie is leading that um, that recruitment uh, for that position. So hopefully we've got two candidates so far and on paper. They were good, so hopefully we'll get someone good out of that. Um, pool closure, we I have a um, changed that a little bit. Initially, when I approached you guys in the winter, we talked about doing the whole facility closure. The more I look at that gym floor, I'm hesitant to do anything on it quite yet. It's in good shape, so if we don't have to, we don't want to. So we're not going to put anything on that right now. It's going great. That. Floor cleaner does an awesome job. Um, it's just in really good shape. So if we don't have to start putting layers on it, we're not going to. So we're only going to do just the pool closure for a week. And then the, the main thing of that what we're going to do is a full closure. Um, and by any of my records, I can't see when the last time we did that. But we have to take pictures of our grades, our DGD grades, and put those on file because we don't have those. And then we'll inspect the um, inlets on those as well and all the components. And a big thing is cleaning the pool deck. Um, there's just a lot of deposit and um, stuff that we have to do on that and the shelf. So we'll clean the deck and the shelf. Tight week, we'll close. We'll start draining after hours on Sunday to get it drained and then start all the work on Monday with the goal to be filling by Thursday because it takes that long to get back up to temperature to treat the heat. So, We'll have a busy week, that second week in August. I think it's August 7th is the first day, whatever that Monday is. Um, but the weight room will be open, fitness classes will be going, um, basketball courts will be open, the only thing is the pool. And to accommodate, we've actually low, we're expanding the pool hours here. So we'll have early morning pool hours at the outdoor pool for lap swim and aqua size. So we are going to, that's one of the reasons too we picked it at this time so that we have the opportunity to use this pool. So. Uh, we will be down the big pool and the little pool and the slide, but it'll be much better when it's all done. We'll nail a lot of those things that have been kind of delayed um, mechanically in there. Um, and then irrigation, it's been a struggle. It went from super wet to super dry really quick, so we've been monitoring and tweaking all of our stations to try to get the, the direction I gave today 
is to do a three zone, uh, three time event on each of the areas where we're doing an eight minute, a 10 minute, and then a four minute on the zones. So it's basically the 20 minutes that we do, it's 23 minutes, but that first one will, will get it somewhat saturated, then it'll actually penetrate on that second one and then come back again. So um, we'll, that, that should start clearing up. Some of those, some areas are starting to go dormant already. It just, just got hot quick on it before we could start getting those things adjusted. So, but we started working on that. Um, the monuments, we started work on those. A lot of weed pulling, getting the drip lines. None of the drip lines work, so we've been monitoring those. But we planted flowers, so we did perennials. So Will did Drake. He did uh, some knockout roses, some uh, daylilies, and then if I'm right, I can't remember. I think he called it Sylvia. Flowers are not my jam, so <laughs> I needed to rely on Will for that. But they'll, they'll come back each and every year. So with this weed monitor, they'll look real good. We've got some plans, especially for this one, where we don't have a drip line, where we're going to go more of a zero scape with this one out here. So we are going to be getting addressing the monuments and getting more mulch and rock on different things, too. We've just been kind of busy. Again, with the water's created some issues. Um, kind of put it in here with some of our retention ponds that we've been kind of working on a little bit there, so, but uh, I think we've got a good plan on those two. We just got to get them dry until we can start executing those plans. Doing great work. Thank mm -hmm. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. We've got a great team and we're having fun. Summer's our fun time. <laughs> but we're all ready to go forward to Labor Day. So. <laughs> yes. And so that reaction or that Captivate software, how's that looking? It's good. So we're in the process right now of working on kinks. Because what that the, the big thing about that, what's gonna be awesome is we're gonna have a really good way to push out to our residents, whoever downloads that app on anything that happens. So if we have a snow closure, a class cancellation, things like that, now we'll have a really good way to push that information out. Um, so they're working on that for us right now. Should be, they said they wanted 30 days to see how they can implement it for us, and then they'll build the app, they'll make it with our logo, so we run the app store on Android or iPhone, it'll be our logo. So, and then there, obviously, as he's going through right now with Tyler, there's going to be bumps anytime we do a software rollout. So, but that's, that was one of the things that why we looked at that software, is because we were using our outgoing messages on our phones and Facebook for closures or class cancellations and with the new the algorithms on Facebook, people just aren't getting it. If we do it, that's something, an instructor's sick and they can't make it, we put it out, one out of 10 might get that message so people still show up. So it's, it's, it'll be $5,000 annually, which we can build, we have in our budget right now for sure, especially in those line items, and then in the future we can easily, that's not an amount we can, the, the impact that we'll get from it and our residents um, the frustration levels will be, it's well worth it on that to have it. And then once we do get it, we'll just put QR codes everywhere so everybody can download it. And that'll be the biggest thing is getting everybody onto their phones. And then we can, because I mean, we've had a close or a late start. I don't know if we closed ever, but we had a late start or early close at least four or five times this last winter where we were struggling and people would still show up. And, you know, you feel terrible because usually I'm the one that's the last one there. You got three feet of snow out there, you're closed, and inevitably our car comes in. You feel terrible because they're coming in and they didn't need to. So. Um, I do have a question. Yes, go ahead. It's, it's not, I didn't see it on here. Mm -hmm. And maybe you said something about it, but the tractor. Did you want to bring that up today or did you want to wait? Well, I want to wait on that because I'm monitoring the budget. I'm not looking at. Um, we're looking at different equipment that can make our life easier when it comes to the detention ponds. Um, in the past, we've done a lot of contracting out, spent a lot of money for other people to do, to maintain our properties. And um, talking with, I say it wrong, I think Podesto Brothers, the ones that sold us the gators, he came in to check on the gators and we were having a conversation and I was telling them about some of our challenges and they got what's called our vent track. It's a tractor that has multiple attachments that you can put on it. One of the attachments is a boom mower, so you can reach that arm about 50 feet out so that we can keep it on dry ground and get these cattails down and get them so they die out. And in the winter, when it ices up or we can get it on it, we can do the rough cut on it, which is basically like a flail. 
and really get it down. And once we get that stuff down, and the nice is it has four tires on, or two tires on each end, so it's double the amount of tires. So it has a, it doesn't float by any means, but it's certainly in mud and bog, cuts right through it. So this would be something where we could, it'd be roughly 28,000 for the tractor. Then each attachment, the boom mower is the most expensive one, that's about 10. But the other ones, like we had, it's called a landscape rake, because once you get all that debris down, you got to get it up, because that was a problem we had in the past. We cut these cattails down, the storm comes, pushes them all towards the outlet. So it has that rake on it where we can rake them out and get it, um, load them up. And thanks to these guys, we got a dump truck already this year, so we can use that Spitzer and dump truck to load it up. So we're getting to the point where we, I would like to see us get more self-sufficient and not have to rely so much on outside work because they're going to do a markup they're renting the equipment they're doing all that so they're we've got talent right. yeah we've got talented people in, that work for us that can do this stuff we just got to get the tools to do it and as we discussed you look at what we've spent on the attention funds already mm -hmm. in the past year our own labor and our own tractor is a very small amount of money compared to what we paid somebody else to do it Absolutely. So if we can save that kind of money, why wouldn't we? Yep. And it, it, it also has winter attachments, because one thing this winter we ran into a lot, and who knows, I've heard that, this is my first year, I got it in January, but I've heard that this winter, snow-wise, was a big one. And we were struggling this year to keep those trails, because all we, we, we maintain all the trails even in the winter. So at Horseshoe, that was miles and miles of trails. We do, and there was a lot of times we're doing it by hand. And this thing has a snowblower attachment where we could also save that manpower because we like to scale down to only our full-time guys. We don't like to carry part-time people in the winter months, again, for to keep the cost down. Awesome. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you for all your work, Marcus. So I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Sorry. You okay if we keep going? Yes. Okay. I can hear JD and I've already read his report. Perfect. Well, thank Number you. 15 will be the water report. Okay, so we have lost a well that failed to, and it had to be uh, required to be pulling. So, what happened to that uh, pump and motor? They were sent to the manufacturer. Uh, what happened is the shaft between the motor and the pump was sheared. So, we only had like half of a pump assembly and the rest of it didn't share it off of there. So that's gone back to the manufacturer to see whether that's a defective warranty issue. And we're hoping that will be the outcome. And so uh, that failure, that happened during the use. It's what we call a, a catastrophic failure when something's in operation. It happens, but it's very rare. Uh, so it was nothing with operations of what they were doing or anything changes of that kind of mechanical issue that had happened. So uh, the next item up is the here pump station upgrade. So or update the rough interior plumbing and electric conduits that were under the concrete floor before pouring the cement is now completed. Uh, the cement slab is now also been poured over the <coughs> conduits. That is completed as well. Uh, the next thing that they had to do is the housekeeping equipment pads. Now, what that is is that supports critical equipment. It serves for weight bearing loads and vibration to minimize that so that none of the equipment can come off and go wherever it is in the plant. You don't want to have that. Um, at the same time, when the uh, subs come in and do those other various things, Glacier would have to have uh, other things to do. So one of those things is, is that our water operations staff had to decommission the well site three for them to start connecting all these lines going into the new plant. So that was done in-house. Uh, so when we take a well out of service, uh, we start losing production. So right now we're doing pretty good as far as production is concerned, uh, even though they're down three well sites. Uh, just because of either construction or, or equipment failure. So just be mindful at one of the failure sites that without production, it's the well site last right now. But um, in order for them to have a safe transition to 
continue their work, we also do hearing aid information. So now there's there's uh, five lines that uh, they have connected to the new plant, and so they right now as the date they got two of the five into that plant. They're working on the third one right now. Also, because of the certain connections that we have to reroute water from, so we are down a tent. So we have the small tank that's down out of commission. Uh, it's a small part of water that's just taken out of the inventory, not really impactful at this time. But if the issue was on the other foot, say if we had lost our one million gallon tank and we had to take it out of production, things would be kind of hairy. It'd be kind of hard to keep a 250 gallon, uh, 250,000 gallon tank full and end up without it overflowing and losing water. So that is out of production there. It is isolated, it is empty. So it's, that tank is slated to be decommissioned to have the new one million gallon tank when the new Bayer plant gets a little further along in construction. So what happens to the water in that tank, we had to drain it down safely that, so we didn't lose uh, pumps and cavitation and that. So we got as much as we can before we had to isolate that. So we minimize the loss of water out of that tank that's drained out the very uh, See here, as of uh, 719, I already covered that. Inside equipment, filters, pumping equipment, the VFDs, the process piping will be put in place either with forklifts or cranes before the, uh, the framing of the walls. That has already been taking place. We have a building today. Two days ago, we did. Nice. So we have walls, we have a roof on there. We just have to wait for the roofers to come in and do their dry ends, and then more equipment to be moved in there that's uh, weather sensitive, uh, being like water sensitive. When can we go on a field trip? You can do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, you exactly this what? a week ago, I said, well, you, all you're gonna see is a slab sticking up above ground, but we have a building, so you can see that. Neil can see that from his, uh, from his front porch. So, I'm sure he's happy about that. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> so that's uh, where we're at with, uh, with uh, their rock. Then the younger water update, as part of the continuing due diligence period, a 30-day extension was made for finalizing the mapping of the well sites and easements in its third phase present, or presented to the younger family and then there's a titling descriptions of the well site locations and easements is also included for that. There are a few details to be worked out during the extension period, which will end at uh, August 14th. So I'm pretty confident that those will be resolved. And we'll go forward with that. And then um, as of uh, 719 there for Falcon Highlands Metro District, the only thing they still have going on is the Sherwin Williams store that's in its remodeling phase. There's no other projects over there currently. Uh, then the Bentgrass Residential, Bentgrass Commercial, uh, Falcon Marketplace is still in the final stages of developments. Falcon Highlands Metro District, again, it's just the Sherwin-Williams remodeling of the old first bank that they are occupying. And then we have the D Water 40, uh, D District School Water, uh, D49 for the water distribution and sewer mains that they're installing currently. It's been quite uh, challenging for their project to get that under control. So they're doing pretty good now. We that have was our, because of all the water, right? No, uh, they have major water issues, ground water. Uh, for example, they had a four inch pump that had pumped nonstop for hours. So I'm thinking probably, I think it was a 24 hour period to set the first manhole. And it is, with that pump, it was everything they could do just to keep it down where they can install the, the manhole base and uh, to get that started. But then they've been fighting with water issues all the way up. They just turned, today they just turned north up away from the Falcon Highway. And so, as far as I know, this road's supposed to be opened up where now both lanes of traffic can go by instead of having flaggers throughout the night. They had flaggers out for the last two nights. 
because they just had a massive hole and they just shut it down to one lane. And they were worried about school starting next week. Right? <laughs> they had them for school start. They were supposed to be already done, already up to the bus barn. And so just to get to where they're at right now, I mean, they're out of the bus lanes for now, but at some point they're going to interrupt that. So I don't know what they're going to do for that. Uh, our back teeth samples were, came back good. The state samples were collected for the nitrates. They came back and they're good. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, no detects, so that's within the district. However, if we get water from the Guthrie wells, uh, in particular, we'll just say just the alluvial well, sometimes the nitrates are higher. That's what was the only thing that was present. So that is, uh, they're still below the, the MCLs. That is the maximum uh, level of contaminants is allowed. And then we have no fire hydrants at this time out of service. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> may, may I chime in just a bit? Um, to add on to his water uh, retort, um, he's really, you guys have really uh, stepped up, and I know you guys had to do a mass water need a replacement in your district we've kind of been challenged with our water meters hitting their battery end of life phase and we've had to replace all of our water meters we chose to adopt the same standards and equipment that you do and um, you guys have just been phenomenal they've gotten us from about more than 45 customers that were not reporting their water properly to the district down to six and one of those people is um, won't let us into his house he's aware of uh, brain waves or something with our we'll deal with that guy somehow but I, I got a comment you know your, your folks who are doing the O&M for our facility have done a phenomenal job just wanted to pass that on to these water guys really know what they're doing. You know, we have a great, great team here. We do. Um, all of our directors have been absolutely amazing <coughs> since they took over. And we appreciate hearing feedback like that, especially from another community that we assist with. Um, there's no doubt in our minds how great they are, but it's glad to see somebody it, else it's recognize that, that also. That we are on a track that is almost at the same standards as you are. We're not there yet, but that's our mission. That's our goal is to mimic your policies, your procedures, your best practices, and become as good of a district as you guys are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I did say any other comments or questions from Mark? Great oh, job. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Just to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the room's cleared out now. So we don't have to get up. You're up. All right. So June DMR is complete. Um, obviously, we had a lot of rainfall this spring. Um, earlier this year, uh, me and Inspector were looking at the, we bought, uh, I think it was 110, they're called rain covers. Basically pulled a manhole lid off and it just sits down on the side, doesn't let water seep in. So even though they're technically sealed, there's a, each one has a pick hole or an access hole, and if it's underwater or under high flow, water can get in there, which we had a lot to do with because our flow is not substantially the wastewater plant. So I think they are already like 45 installed. So we're just trying to get that framed in. Um, finally, after a year and a half, we moved on back to bar screen is fully in service. Um, there are some problems with the from the manufacturer because they upsized the motor on it, but didn't fully upsize some of the electrical components. So, thankfully, Ross Electric figured out what was wrong. We have three components in there now, and it's been working like a champ for three weeks. Is he brilliant, boring you, Troy? <laughs> you just hear him yawning. I'm sorry. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he's asleep and that was him snoring. Could be. <laughs> so I thought I had some good news for you guys. Um, we got the 125 motor installed on floor number three and 
Last evening, we had it running, fired up. Uh, all we needed was a couple of BFD fans because we were up here to pay Paul earlier in the year for some other stuff. And this afternoon, I got a call from the guy that installed it, asked me to please shut it down because the company sent the wrong motor. So now they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. I, I won't tell you how mad I was, but so we're still on that two blowers after uh, 19 months now. Great. So see what they come up with. Um, go first water, just finish that. Um, good good news about uh, Grandview Lift Station. Um, just passed by the circuit of Mexico. Uh, yesterday, we met with the Water Quality Management Committee and the Citizens Action Committee, and both of them passed it. So now they got all blessings from the county, should go to CDPHE, and by mid-August, they should get their approval. So it's looking like a pretty strong start that beginning of next year, they may be able to break ground on that list station. Um, the, we started, actually today, started uh, putting in parts in the solid handling. It's gonna take a couple weeks to get that done, but so far it's going good. Um, yeah, here my money comes in. So, again, you know we've had motor problems at Meridian Lift Station. So a little backstory on this. We ordered new motors, and I talked to Troy about it. They're expensive. However, when we built that lift station, it went online in 2013, there were 2,000 motors available. Somebody back in the day decided to go with the cheaper route with this being phased out. We pretty much got the last of them. There's no parts available, there's nothing. So the one re replacement one we had is one that uh, Jerry bought back in 2019, and that one didn't last either. So we didn't really have an option except uh, so what's this going to cost the district? Well, two eighty. Great. Not two hundred eighty dollars. Where do you buy your stuff from? <laughs> Same place, Jerry. <laughs> Bob Barry Ben. <laughs> so the electricians or the electric com motor company. Uh, they can't get any more shafts for the motors we have, so we already scrapped one. They did make a modification. The, the last thing they can try to get us by till the end of the year. We just dropped that motor back in on Tuesday. I said this before, it's up, it's running. I'll probably get an alarm at 9 o'clock tonight, so don't hold your breath. But at least we have Love right now two bumps running. We'll save her for you all. So sometime at the end of this year, early next year, we should get the new pumps in. and. The company will come down and help us go through startup, warranty them, and hopefully we're good, at least on that part of the list station for 25 years. So at that time, are we going to buy a spare? We got one. So that's our theory. There's two that will be active and one on the shelf. And again, it's, you know, Katie knows about this. I will sleep at night over this. We have one pump that's basically running that wastewater plant. And yes, we do have the option to send our flow to Cherokee, but there's not enough flow to keep the plant going. And once you violate that, you know where that goes. So it's a pretty low cost of overall scheme of things. But it is a big expense. And thankfully, my solid handling project fell through, so we just took the money from CapEx to cover the expense on this. So it didn't hurt us, it just wasn't expected. Um, Wastewater plant's doing great, uh, no downtime. Um, I just submitted all our uh, EMR lab degradation stuff today. So we can hear what the results are here in the next two weeks. Um, there's no work on the rules and regulations. Thank you for passing that water and wastewater report thing. That's, that's huge. Um, they're working on five star for the lift stations. Just did a, had a meeting today. We're getting the programming ready for lift station one. Uh, we're hoping to come up next week, get that installed, and uh, run up through its paces. Nice thing is that program is pretty much the same with all of them, so it be, should be copy and paste kind of thing. So it should go pretty quick. Um, JD said D49 is putting in the sewer line. Uh, they've run in nothing but 
dribbles, and I know they're not happy with me because they actually got a trench box stuck in there yesterday, and they want to just bury it and leave it. And I told them no, in case we ever have to dig it up, or predecessor or someone, I don't want a big surprise of a couple ton box sitting there they can't get around, so. The trench box that they put in so people can work in it? Yep. Mm -hmm. So the And walls, they got it stuck. It's so wet, the walls kind of slipped against it and basically created suction, so they <laughs> needed to close the highway down and get two excavators in there and dig alongside while one tugs and pulls to get it back out of there. It's been a... How nice. Yeah, it's been a fiasco. <laughs> Had a, had a new collections operator. Uh, he just started on Monday. And then the other collection operator put his notice in today. He'll be done on August 18th. So, if you know anyone has a CDL, you would like to work for me, send them over. Is that it? That's it. Thank you very much. Again, appreciate all the awesome hard work. You guys are doing great. I love this new encouraging channel. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the old one? I like him too. The new and improved version. John 2.0. Okay, item 17. Items unfinished from previous meeting. Do we have anything? So. Item 18, board follow up on older items. Do we have anything for that? Nope. Oh. Okay, item 19, executive session for determining positions relative to matters that may be subject to negotiations under CRS 24-64024E, namely Falcon Highlands Water and Wastewater Agreement, Younger Water Purchase Agreement, and the CMD Water Agreement. I'll leave you, but thank you very much. And I wanted to pass my support on for that, what you're about to discuss. And we're, we're glad you guys are on our side. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you for coming. Have a good, have a good one. So All right. Five, we'll make a motion. Uh, we'll we'll make go into executive session. You're making one? Yep. We're just did. All second. Yeah, no problem. Motion by John, second by Sherry. Any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are in executive session after John was put up. Any other business? Uh, you were going to talk about the new task force? Yeah, so this is actually, you know, we sent out an email about this, and you know, with all good intentions, sometimes they go a little bit awry. The, this latest legislative session uh, calls for the creation of a metropolitan district task force. This is actually a task force that's going to be created at the state level, not the individual district level. So there's nothing that the district needs to specifically do other than provide notice to the mailers that uh, this task force Daniel. exists. Yes, sir. Oh, has a notice been sent out? Do you know the home orders on that metropolitan district task force? Not to my knowledge. Okay, I'll follow up with you on this. Okay. That would come from you, correct? When you say notice sent out, you mean published? Uh, not published, just email blast. Yeah. So maybe that would come for me. I get. I'll do I'll that. Yeah. Um, so basically, just notice needs to be provided to homeowners that this task force exists prior to the first meeting. First meeting hasn't been scheduled yet. We have plenty of time. Uh, and then we're recommending that language also be posted on the website, just in case doesn't want someone to check right now. But that's basically it. Nothing else is required of the district in terms of creating task force. Oh, there you go. Our council said uh, she got wind that it was in November when they're coming. That's what I said. But you know, there's plenty of time. Is does Woodman Hills have a requirement to put this out? There is a requirement to notify. Public public public. Public. I thought it was. I thought yeah. Troy wasn't there. Something that we were. We really didn't have to, but we're going to anyway because we like to keep our members informed. Didn't I read something about that? Well, this, it is statutory because they created a task force. I, I so understand, but there was, hey, Troy, you are you still there? Hello? Okay, well, regardless. I'm here, I'm here. Woodman Hills is sending this out so that all of our members, all of our residents 
are notified. Perfect. Next. Um, so in regards to the draft second addendum to the international government between Wooden Hills and Falcon Highlands, um, after discussion, the board has decided we will do no more work with that second addendum, addendum but we would like to begin work on a memorandum of understanding for consolidation of Falcon Highlands. Is that correct? Yes. So, um, help me understand the IGA that is in draft is, is been shown? Or? Yes. Por portions of it, yes. Okay. Yes. So the the direction from the Woodman Hill side is that we're gonna want to enter into an MOU agreement to talk about the steps that Falcon Highlands is gonna need to take in order to consolidate the districts, which will address a lot of the issues on the water and wastewater side. Now there is still going to be a second amendment, but it's gonna address um, issues outside of capacity. So John will be in contact with Barb, your guys' attorney, about that. And you are you are one of the board members. I am a Falcon Highlands board member, and uh, that's all I am. I'm just, uh, it was an interest item for me, so I, I'm not trying to interfere with the decision or the process. I'll let it all work out. I just was curious, and I was here to offer support. And if you have any questions, I'm here. Well, I have questions, but I don't know if this is the perfect way to ask them. <clears throat> you, you know what questions I'm going to ask, correct? I, I mean, you, from the questions that I asked during our discussion. I can certainly do my best to answer. I've been on the board for seven years, so I have a little bit of background. I don't want to step on anything here. Yeah, I think that our discussion held in an executive session on kind of the well, on the matter subject to negotiation, should probably remain in the executive session. Okay. But it, it is always the discretion of the board to you know, make that decision as well. I'm not going to step on anything. Appreciate your letting me have the opportunity to sit in on it. Do we have any other board business? Okay, um, will someone make a motion to adjourn? I make a motion, we adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> Good luck, Troy. Any more discussion? No. Okay. Motion by John, second by Kelsey. Any other, uh, that's it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.